Saving green. Saving green. Be the team. <laughs> yeah. Saving green. Be the team. Saving green. Be the team. Ninjas, what is going on on this beautiful wacky granny Wednesday? Hey, I'm not the only one that's had the same thing on mine. Look at this crew right here with the scabber in the front. And I want to say that hustler in the back. I want to say that, yeah, it's probably the same guy, same crew. The weed eater guy, the mower guys, all of them. None of them have eye protection, ear protection. And, you know, that is so crucial. It's just something that stands out to me. And I know, uh, you know, none of us are perfect. We all sometimes, you know, heck, I even sometimes will start mowing or we didn't and go, oh crap, and then I put my glasses on. But, and I know Busy B's had it a few times himself, but uh, it's very, very important. Uh, these guys, they look like they don't even bother with it. And it's stuff like that, Ninjas, I really want you to keep in mind when you are out here trimming or mowing, you know, it. I've gotten hit so many times in my glasses with rocks and things. I've actually had a rock bust my glasses, like it shattered. Here comes the hustler guy from the back. It's a nice looking hustler. Anyway, as you can see, I am going solo today. Busy bees at school. Uh, that's the glass right there. And uh, normally he meets me around one, two o'clock, but today I do have a routine, regular routine dentist appointment around 2.30. So I've got a few more yards I gotta knock out and then head on over there. So I told him just to take the day off today. See that guy down there, Ninjas? He's got another little scabber too. That is a 62 year old gentleman. I just talked to him. He stopped by as he was passing. I just finished with my yard. That is a 62 year old gentleman and he is solo and he does about 10 yards a day roughly. He said uh, sometimes he would do about 12 or 14, but he tries to keep it around 10 yards a day. I know if you guys can see him, he's right there. And uh, he, said, he said, I've tried to find help. Um, you know, I can find help in the fall, in the winter, and sometimes in the early spring, but as soon as it gets warm, they just start goofing around, they quit. You know, I, I've fired so many, I can't keep a helper just because nobody really takes this serious, wants to work, so I just decided I'm gonna stay solo. I couldn't believe him when he told me he's 62 years old. That is absolutely amazing, and he looks great, and um, for the fact that he's out here just even doing this type of work. We were talking how this is such hard work, you know, this is a young man's game is what we both agreed that it's called. This is a young man's game. You can only do it for so long and then you either figure out a way to um, figure out a way to do it easier if you still decide that you want to stick you know into this industry or do something else so he said you know when i was younger he he did it on and off for a while but he said when i was younger it was nothing but now that I'm 62, he goes, I definitely feel it and I can't do it like I used to. And I totally agreed with him. I said, no, you're absolutely right. This is a young man's game. You, uh, you can only do this for so long. That's why ninjas, it's so important. Some of the things I was talking about, even in several, several videos back, you know, about saving money and, and if this is the industry and career that you decide you want to do, you're not gonna be able to do this forever. I don't care how good shape you are, how young you feel, how, you know, whatever the case may be, but I'm telling you right now, I mean, I don't even feel the same like I used to when I was in my, you know, early to mid twenties when I started. So I, I'm sure in another 10 years, I'm gonna feel even more different than what I do now. So it's really important to really figure out what are you wanting to do for your life and if this is the decision that you want to do this is the kind of stuff the kind of work you like to do really really play it smart sometimes people will you know make fun of you or say oh you know he's just 
you know trying to figure out a way to make life a little easier man it's all about get down and dirty and you know do the hard work <clears throat> this work is hard work period you, you don't have to really get down and dirty and on your knees and stuff to 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 just be considered you're a hard worker if you're in this industry and you're cutting yards and you're doing a good job you're already working really hard and there's nothing wrong if uh you come across something that will make your life a little easier whether it be a piece of equipment whether it be a certain type of mower or whatever it may be because it's already hard as it is ninjas so it's all about trying to make your life a little easier and i uh i gotta give you know mad respect to all these companies out here who are trying to be innovative and and come up with some awesome products that will make life a lot easier out here for all of us ninjas in the lawn care landscaping industry this is not this is not easy and saving money is key as i said earlier it's a young man's game you're only gonna be able to do this for so long man and if you're doing this and you're not saving any kind of money or something you're putting aside for your retirement or man you're in a world of trouble when the age starts creeping up on you and you uh you're not able to do this anymore so anyway i just thought i'd share did not get any mowing footage today just finished mowing actually i ended up having to stop go to my dentist appointment and then get back at it so it just kind of messed everything up as far as the video goes but i do have something i want to cover with you ninjas today so as a lot of you know this is just a temporary truck the f-150 it is struggling to pull this trailer it's got the 5.0 in it but um, it is just a temporary truck tiny is getting a little bit of work done to it and uh, anyway they just called me left me a voicemail that tiny's ready so i didn't get a chance in finishing time especially with the dentist appointment to uh, run down to the dealership and uh, do the exchange so we'll be doing that tomorrow stay tuned i'll definitely have some footage of that and we'll go over everything what they did on tiny and all that good stuff but anyway what i wanted to cover in today's video ninjas and this is very important especially for a lot of you who are like i said before getting into the business maybe just got started or maybe even thinking about it you're going to be forced at some point or another if you're trying to expand especially to get a trailer so you can haul your equipment around okay now you're gonna have a lot of options on your trailers you know what width what length and then the type of trailer that you want and what I say with that what type of trailer what I mean by that is so you've got a couple of options one you're gonna have the standard angle iron it is a lot lighter but it is a lot cheaper made and it is a lot cheaper just overall it's a lot cheaper of a trailer which is what i ran for about six seven years give or take and i think if you are starting out you should probably most likely start with that because it's going to cost you the lowest dust it's going to cost you the lowest amount okay and it'll get you by it can definitely take care of you the angle iron trailer that i had i put a beating on that thing and it lasted me for plenty of plenty of years i mean like i said about six seven years now i had to replace some axles and things like that that's just your standard wear and tear but why you should also probably go with the angle iron because of the type of truck that you are maybe using and this has got me thinking a lot about this stuff ever since i've been in this temporary f-150 now this thing is struggling with this trailer as you can see this is not an angle iron trailer this is a fully boxed in trailer and you have a couple of options if you are trying to get in a fully closed frame you can do the box square which is what this is or you can do a tubing and same thing they're all closed in but the tubing i don't know tubing it just seems to me and 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 Maybe some of you ninjas have it, I don't know, but it would be tougher to maybe install some of these um, trimmer racks, blower racks, things of that nature. So that is the reason why I went with the square. But you're getting a lot more of a heavier trailer anytime you go with closed in frame, right? Because there, there's just gonna be so much heavier, more metal. And so keep that in mind when you are trailer shopping, especially if you are working with like a F-150, for example, or maybe just like a, 
a Dodge Ram, you know, 1500, or maybe like a Chevy 1500 or something like that, you're gonna go through a lot more gas. I'm not saying that it can't pull it, but you're gonna be going through a lot more gas and more wear and tear on your truck if you get something with a closed in frame. So an angle iron would be more practical and it'll do just fine. Now, if you are running like an F-250 or maybe some kind of a diesel, whether it be a Chevy or a Dodge or something like that, or just a heavy duty or truck, um, then you, you might be able to um, look into some of these and then and, and consider, especially if you're trying to upgrade or, or whatnot. Now, keep in mind when you are buying a trailer, you're gonna have options on your axles. Your standards are about 3,500 pounds per axle. And now keep that in mind, that is, in you have to include the trailer weight itself as well on top of the equipment that you're gonna put on. So 3,500 pound axles may sound like, oh, that's plenty, but it wasn't, at least it wasn't for me. I used to go through tires all the time and heck, I even went through a couple of axles. I had to replace them completely. One time I did it before I started the YouTube ordeal and the second time was during the time I was already making YouTube videos for you ninjas, so you guys, some of you loyal ninjas who've been around for a while, you'll remember what I'm talking about. I think I made a video on it when we were switching that out. These, I think they're about 5,500 pound axles. So I did go up a notch and got a little bit of a beefier axles. I just knew because, well, for one, this is an 18 footer trailer, by the way. So I knew if I'm getting an 18 footer, my old one was a 14 footer. So, it, you know, I'm getting four more feet, figured I'm gonna at least throw on one more mower. I wanted to have something that wasn't gonna go through tires and bearings and things of that nature as quickly as the 3,500 pounds would. Uh, also, when you're shopping for a trailer, you're gonna have to make some decisions as far as what length and width, right? The size of your trailer. Now, keep in mind, we all are thinking like, well, you know, I don't really need a big trailer. I don't really have a whole lot of yards. You know, I, I don't really need all that. You know, all that makes perfectly, perfectly good sense. But you will outgrow your trailer ninjas. I outgrew my 14 footer within, I don't know, maybe if not the first year, at least by the second or third. So, and I was struggling. I was trying to cram everything in there. And when you are working with a trailer that you don't have a lot of space, you are more likely to overload it right because you're trying to squeeze everything in you're more likely to put more on there than you should not realizing that and then having 3500 pound axles you're going to be way over the limit and you're going to kill your trailer at some point eventually i did treat this wood this last um winter spring i guess if you want to call it it was right before the season started and i think i'm going to have to do it again probably if not this winter, definitely maybe touch it up before the next season starts. If you are going with a bigger trailer, you're going to get a bigger gate. And keep in mind, these gates are super heavy ninjas. That is something we don't think a lot about until we actually purchase it and we go out here and we're already working. And then we find out real quickly how heavy these gates are. Now, I did buy a little bit of a bigger gate than your standard. I'm not really sure. Don't hold me to it, but I think your standard is maybe like a five footer or something. And if that's the case, then this is the six footer. And if the standard is like a four footer, then this is a five footer. I definitely, I think I purchased an extra foot. Um, I didn't really care for these, but they came with the trailer. I guess it's fine. It helps when you are maybe loading, unloading some heavier equipment so you don't bend the gate itself. So I ended up running with the Gorilla Lifts. They've done me okay. I've had some issues with these cables several times replacing them. Knock on wood, I haven't had any issues this season, but I definitely have had several issues in the course of let's say last maybe year year and a half you're gonna need something like this whether you go with a gorilla lift or whatever other brand there's other brands out there but you're gonna need some kind of gate assist the trailers do come with these springs which mine both busted on both sides and i just haven't had a chance i keep forgetting honestly about it but i haven't had a chance to go and purchase uh these they're they're not that expensive um and it was first one of them that broke and then the other one broke right there so the gate actually is not super heavy with the gorilla lifts 
but if I replace those, which I plan to, uh, it'll be even lighter. Now, one thing that's a downfall on these Gorilla Lifts Ninjas, they take up a lot of space on both sides of your trailer. And that is definitely not something I'm a fan of, but I do have a little bit right here. I did have a water cooler, I think, or a sprayer. I think it was a sprayer holder right here. I never did put it back, but I need to. So that's the only space I have. That's the kind of a downfall with these Gorilla Lifts. Another thing I wanna keep in mind that I wanna remind you ninjas, and this is something I did not think about when I purchased this trailer, okay? When you are buying angle irons, it's all open, right? It's all open. But when you go in with a boxed in trailer, whether it is a, a, a square or you know tubing, water, you're gonna drill holes in this thing because you're gonna put, wanna put some racks on there, blower racks, weed eater racks. Water will get in here. You know, I don't care what you do, water will get in here. And the problem is, water does not get out of here. And if it does, it'll take forever for it to get out. With that being said, you're talking about rust and things that are gonna be developing in here. I think the quick solution for um, something like this, drilling little bitty holes, not too many, you don't wanna do that because you'll weaken it, but just like maybe one here and one on each corner, maybe one through the center or something like that and that way you're allowing that water to come out so it doesn't sit in there because these trailers will eventually rust on you now i don't really plan on keeping this trailer for 10 years like i did with the other one i don't really plan on getting rid of it neither but you know this trailer if it lasts me five years whatever great and i think it will hopefully it will the last one heck it lasted me seven years and i was in an accident and it even survived that. And to keep in mind price-wise, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna wanna, if you're on a budget, definitely angle iron. I'm telling you, if you're starting out this business, angle iron, uh, a lot cheaper. So this trailer, don't hold me to it, exact dollar amount, but I say it's seven by 18 with the up, upgraded um, axles. I think it ran me right around maybe four, between four to 5,000, just give and take roughly compares to the angle iron and needless to say that trailer was a 14 footer but still i think that thing cost me like 12 or 1500 i wouldn't recommend you buying any kind of trailers off of home depot or lowe's because they're overpriced honestly i'm sure they have good trailers i don't know but they're overpriced so whenever you are buying a trailer just go to one of the actual manufacturers you know one of these uh places that actually that's all they do is they make and sell trailers i want you to really think about ninjas as you are considering trailer shopping, remember, just because you don't think you need a 14 footer, maybe you just say, oh, I just need a 12 footer, you're gonna outgrow it. So if you have the capital, I'd go ahead and buy the 14 or the 16. You may not use the whole capacity of it right now, but if you are really dedicated to this, you're trying to grow your business, you're committed to this, you're gonna be buying equipment. You're gonna need room. So why have to fool with it and later not have any room why not just get a little bit of a bigger trailer so that way you're gonna be set down the road. And that brings me to my next and last topic of this video, Ninjas. Single axle or dual axle? My professional opinion, always go dual axle. Don't ever go single axle. That's just my opinion. Single axle, again, they're, it's a good, they're good trailers, but you can't put as much on there, number one. And two, if you have a flat, or something happens you're in big trouble and i think single axle trailers are harder to pull to be honest with you they're harder to back up now i had an enclosed so one last thing i had an enclosed and i like the enclosed there's nothing wrong with enclosed trailers by all means but two things that bothered me with it one they were bulky and big and if you have a lot of yards that are in like downtown areas and tight turns and parking lot you're going to scrape it that's number one. But if you don't have that issue, that's fine. If you're out in the suburbs or something, uh, it'll probably work for you. Um, and then the other one is the heat. It gets so hot in there. It is unbelievable. So what I have discovered in the last course of the last couple of years, having an enclosed trailer, is my equipment would actually start to act up and not run correctly or I'd have trouble starting it. And, and it's all I come to find out down the road. I didn't know that right away, but it's because it literally is getting cooked inside that enclosed trailer. Not to mention, I prefer an open trailer just because I like my equipment to be seen when I pull up in the neighborhood. The neighbors, the customer, everybody 
no seat looks out the window oh it's the lawn care company you know they see me and you're you know if you've got nice equipment you maintain your equipment you do a good job of course you have uh, higher chances of maybe a neighbor walking over and saying sup ninja want to cut my grass all right i'm out of here ready to go home get ready for tomorrow it's gonna be a long day busy b does not have school thursday friday and saturday so we're gonna have three days of some exciting work days and hopefully some good content so thank you for tuning in thank you for watching we'll see you in the next one peace